color, a very simple concept that can be expressed in many different ways. Particularly in computing, the concept of color is actually converted into many different and generally incompatible notations that are used for different purposes. Today, we're going to look at several different expressions of color to try to understand how we get these expressions as well as what their purpose is. You're watching another Random Wednesday episode on 0612 TV. Hello and welcome back to another Random Wednesday episode. So today we're going to be talking about color models, they are also sometimes known as color spaces, even though these two terms are not strictly the same, they're actually used interchangeably a lot of the time. Basically, a color model is just a language you can use to express what a color actually is. Most of these languages are numerical in nature. For example, the most well-known color space is of course RGB, which we can use to describe color by simply providing three numbers, indicating the levels of red, green, and blue respectively. Basically, the rest of the color spaces we're going to be looking at today go along the same line except the values are different. They have different meanings and are used for different purposes. So yeah, with that in mind, let us take a look at several different color models. I will walk you through the basics of, you know, what the values actually mean in that context, as well as what is the use of that particular color model. So yeah, let's jump right into the very first one. We've already just mentioned it by name, and that of course is the RGB color model. This of course is the one that we've most commonly seen, and it describes color using three values, red, green, and blue. RGB is an additive color model, and what that means is the whole idea is we have these individual primary colors, we mix them together by basically adding their intensities on top of each other to create the final color we want. The reason why RGB is used and not any particular other combination of colors is of course because of the tristimulus theory. And to put that in very simple words, these are the colors of light that our eyes respond the most to. And so, well, this color model has actually been tailored to fit how our eyes see the world. I'm not gonna talk too much about tristimulus theory because I have dedicated an entire video to this subject before. If you're interested to find out more, there is an annotation link on screen. In terms of the pros and cons of this model, you know, in terms of how and when it is used, RGB sort of takes the middle ground. You see, it is not a very intuitive color model in and of itself, but with a bit of training, with a bit of experience, you can be quite good with RGB. So that is the human side of things. For computers, RGB isn't great to work with. Sure, it is how, you know, monitors display an image, it is how your eyes perceive the image, but when you want to do processing, you might want to break things down in a way that is easier to process. And as we move on, we'll see methods that fit this description. So enough about RGB, let's move on to take a look at something else that we are probably quite familiar with, and that is HSV. HSV stands for Hue, Saturation, and Value. And this color model is actually linked to several other very similarly named models, namely HSL, which is hue, saturation, and lightness, as well as HSB, which is hue, saturation, and brightness. This color model is designed with artists in mind. This is of course one of the most intuitive ways of thinking about color. You see in HSV, the first thing you have is a hue, and that allows you to choose the raw color you want. The saturation determines how concentrated the color is, while the value determines its brightness. Expressing color in this manner also allows us to adjust the colors of an image in a manner that wouldn't have been quite as easy as if we used RGB. That of course is the most evident in the hue and saturation tool of your image editor. For example, you can actually tweak up the saturation of the image. You can change up the colors without actually touching the brightness of the image. And this is something you cannot do if you were to, you know, purely express an image in terms of R, G, and B. As mentioned, several variations of HSV actually exist. And well, 
these different definitions are actually not compatible with each other. Let's first take a look at HSL, that is hue, saturation, and lightness. If we were to bring the lightness all the way down, the color you get at the end of the day is black, regardless of what hue or saturation you pick. Similarly at 1, the color you get is going to be pure white. This is different from HSV, where V stands for value. At 0, you do get the same kind of behavior where all the colors are black, but at 1, what you get is basically the full color itself. So yeah, despite the naming similarities, there are some differences in terms of how the color models actually work, and sometimes we use these terms interchangeably, which strictly speaking is not correct. So with that, let us now move on once again to the next color model, namely YUV. Well, technically this is just one of a family of similar color models, you know, things like Y'CBCR, YPBPR, you know, just one of these that has Y in them. Now I hope you forgive the pun, but why are these color models actually grouped together? You see, they do something in common, and that is they split away the color information from the brightness information. In fact, to get a better look at how this color model actually works, let's take a closer look at Y'CBCR. This is actually the encoding scheme used for JPEG images, as well as certain types of movie file formats. You see, the Y channel is basically a channel that records the luminance of the image. In other words, it captures the brightness information of every pixel in the image. Then, the remaining two channels are devoted to just capturing color information. Breaking things down in this manner makes it very convenient for processing by algorithms. In fact, we've talked about JPEG in the past, so I won't go into too much detail. I'll put a link on screen so you can check out that episode. But one of the things JPEG does is chroma subsampling. Basically, it takes the two color channels, in other words, known as the chroma channels, and it actually throws away some of the resolution in those channels. The idea of course being that you cannot see color detail as well as you can see brightness detail. So it's okay to actually throw away some of the details there. Expressing an image in another format, say RGB, would have made this impossible to do, because in RGB, you don't separate color information from brightness information. They're all mixed and mashed into each other. Whereas in this case, they're split out nicely, and you can do this computation basically on the individual channels. In fact, the information saved by encoding methods like JPEG is actually YUV information. To actually display the result on screen, we will have to convert it to RGB before being able to do so. Let us now move on to CMYK. Yes, four letters. In other words, we are actually representing color with four different channels now. CMYK is a subtractive coloring model, and in fact, it is used in print. That is, if you've actually looked at the colors in a printer, you realize that they are actually cyan, magenta, yellow, and black. And that is precisely what CMYK actually stands for. And the reason why we have four colors instead of three is because, well, it makes a lot more sense to basically have an additional black color instead of synthesizing our own black color using the other three colors. The reasons for this is twofold. First of all, if you actually try to mix cyan, magenta, and yellow together to try and create black, First of all, the black you get wouldn't really look black. It will look some kind of a dark brownish color. So yeah, it's not quite as aesthetically pleasing as the real deal. At the same time, if you had to do things this way, you'll be wasting a lot of ink. Because anytime you want black color, you will have to use ink from all three colors. And so that would not be practical. So yeah, these are the reasons why an additional black color is thrown into the mix. So yeah, what we've covered today are the more prominent color models. These are of course not the only color models that are out there. In fact, there are some other pretty interesting ones, which I'll encourage you to look them up. Some of the pretty interesting ones include CCMMYK, which is a six-channel color model that is actually used in more serious printing for better color reproduction. 
Similarly, back in the day when we've just taken one step up from monochrome footage, basically what we had was RG. Just two channels, they've thrown away the blue because, you know, it doesn't have such a huge visual impact. So yeah, like I said, many color models are available out there. If you're interested to find out more, definitely do more research, look for other types of color models, and see what you can find out. Anyway, that's all there is for this episode today. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you gained some insights on this very broad subject. But until next time, you're watching 0612 TV. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, consider checking out the rest of my work on my channel. Alternatively, you may be interested in a playlist of my earlier work on computing and computer science topics. If you'd like to show me some monetary support, I am on Patreon. You can find a link to my campaign in the video description. Of course, you can simply like this video or leave a comment. I'll be sure to respond as soon as I can. To keep in touch with my future uploads, do subscribe to this channel. And for even more updates, check out the official Twitter account for this channel at 0612TV. Thank you for your support.